Alrighty, so you want to do a more complex idle task. Well, that's actually a lot simpler than you might think initially. Uh, it might be a bit daunting at first to do like a whole task like sleeping or something like that. However, uh, once you really get down to it, it's more or less just make neighbor move to spot, play animation, set some variables if needed, uh, play other animation, uh, randomize task. That's pretty much how the entire uh, system goes when you really get down to it. Uh, however, since the first idle tutorial uh, basically only showed like a pretty a pretty simple uh, task, uh, I, I decided I wanted to do something a bit more complex and uh, for that we will be doing sleeping. Uh, so, firstly, we're just going to go into the sozed uh, folder, go to blueprints, behavior, tasks, idle. We're just going to duplicate this and call it BT task sleep. Okay, cool. And uh, we're just going to delete all of this because we don't need it right now. Oh, and silly me, before I forget, we have to make an actual, like, bed object. So, we're just gonna go to objects, BP objects, we'll create a new blueprint actor class and call it BP bed. Now, by default, we're gonna look, go into the tags here, add one called neighbor. This is important. This is a, this is actually like the most important part of the entire thing because the reason why we're why we're adding this tag is basically we're gonna use this uh, node to get called get all actors of class with tag, and it'll just be the same exact thing neighbor. So what this is going to be doing is it's going to get every single actor of the class BP bed, in this case, with this specific tag. And this will allow you to uh, dynamically, like, well, not dynamically, uh, basically choose which beds you want the neighbor to be able to sleep in. Uh, you can also add and remove this task uh, at runtime, not tag, uh, not task. You can also add and remove this tag uh, in blue through blueprints uh, at runtime, so that whenever this task is uh, used, like say for example the bed is in uh, some like upstairs upstairs room here, even though the this model doesn't have an upstairs room, but say there was an upstairs and there was a there is a locked locked room with a bed in it. Of course, you don't want the neighbor to try and move to a bed that he can't move to, so you would have some sort of blueprint in the level that removes that tag. However, once this, uh, once the door that goes to this room is unlocked, uh, it will add that tag back, and it'll basically add that back to the list of beds that he is able to sleep in. I hope that was, uh, uh, that was, uh, easy enough to understand. Uh, but yeah, that's basically why we're adding this tag here. So, uh, we're gonna, in the, uh, bed, uh, blueprint, we're gonna add a static mesh. We're gonna use the bed mesh right here. If it's, it'll load, please load. There we go, just took a little bit. Uh, by the way, this... This bed model has, like, an absurd number of vertices. Uh, fun fact. Uh, 1,000, 100,000 vertices! <laughs> uh, I, this is not relevant to the... This is not relevant to the tutorial in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to point this out because, holy crap, that's absurd. Uh, anyways. Uh, just gonna compile and save that. And, uh, actually, we'll add one last thing. An arrow. And let's, uh, rotate this that way. 
Now, that arrow is essentially going to be uh, determining... That arrow is going to be the t determining, like, the neighbor's, like, location that he's going to move to and the rotation it's going to send him to. So, to uh, visualize this better, I usually add a skeletal mesh of the neighbor. Obviously oriented correctly. And then I change the animation mode to use animation asset. And then I look for the sleep cycle sleeping cycle is that it nope that's not it that's that's uh that's a newer animation a uh, sofa sleeping here it is sofa sleeping and i and because this skeletal mesh is attached to the arrow we can move it around to better orient the uh to better orient the neighbor uh i think It'll only allow him to move this close. I have had problems in the past where uh, the uh, navigation doesn't go as far as I want it to. So in order to fix that, what we can do is we can... Uh, uh, set can ever affect navigation to false. This is basically a bit of a a bit of a workaround. And we just add a cube and just size it up to be uh, about. Mm, let's turn down the snap size. The uh, scaling. There we go. Uh, about there. However, in the X values, we'll just set this to, like, right here. We'll turn off the visibility so it doesn't actually affect, uh, it just so it doesn't actually, like, render. So that way, we place a bed here. It doesn't actually... I maybe I oh whoops maybe I just raise it up there we go uh hmm it's still it's still not exactly uh, oh wait I forgot I'm gonna have to turn off the collision as well uh, I'll just set it to custom just so we can turn off everything. Uh, no collision. Uh, hmm. Gosh dang it. Uh, you know what? Forget this entire thing. Forget this entire thing. We can just fix this in the uh, the navigation settings. I'm pretty sure this has a complex collision. Yep, complex collision is supposed to. Be. Okay, cool. Uh, navigation system. Navigation mesh actually. Uh, cell size. Let's change this to fifteen. Uh, Lower this to five. Tile size. Hmm. I forgot how to fix this actually. Oh my gosh, I think I think that was too low. I think that was too low of a number. I think that was too low of a number. It's lagging my engine. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. That's better. That's better. Okay, never mind. I didn't forget how to fix this. Okay, so changing the tile size to a lower number will actually allow the navigation to the navigation mesh to uh be more accurate. However, 
you do not want this uh, to be too low because this does affect performance. Uh, it doesn't affect performance. It doesn't affect. Blah. Can't talk today. It doesn't affect the performance right now. However, in a another tutorial that hopefully we'll be releasing later today, uh, or at least later after uh, this one gets uploaded, uh, we're going to be setting this runtime generation from static to dynamic. And that's for, uh, that's gonna be for, uh, the doors. Uh, so, however, we're gonna keep it static for now, because this isn't actually needed. needed. Uh, actually, I'm gonna change the tile size back to, like, five. Three seems a little small. Maybe four? Sure, let's keep it at four. Okay, cool. Just save the level really quick. And let's go ahead and delete the skeleton mesh. Okay, cool. Now we got our bed set up. Now we gotta set up the actual task. So, get all actors of class with tag. BB bed, neighbor. We're gonna, gonna do. Oh, goodness gracious! No! That note is an in uh, Unreal 5. Okay, then I guess we're gonna. Then I guess uh, we might as well put this in a, in a function. Call this get bed. Get all actors of class with tag. BP bed. Neighbor. Oh, whoops. I miss, I accidentally put a space there. For each loop. Or actually, no, not a full loop. We're gonna get a copy. We're gonna do random integer in range. last index the minimum being zero and the maximum being the last index so this is just going to get a random bed with this tag essentially so let's do a return node and just put that there i'll just return value or actually found a bed Drag and drop that in here. There we go. Simplified into a function. Just a general rule of thumb: any simple thing like this, you any simple like thing like this, you will want to put into a function just to make the overall blueprint a lot more uh, a lot more clean. Uh, if reroute nodes are, if you're creating one too many reroute nodes. Uh, anyways, so. Add a move two. On is going to be the neighbor. Drop node. Found bed. We're going to get the arrow. Let's move this over here. We're going to do get world. Why can't I type today? Get world location. There. And this will make the the neighbor try and move to the bed, uh, the bed, or specifically the bed's arrow location. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, put that into the behavior tree before we do anything. Sleep. Blackboard key is equal to. Oh, we don't have that one. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and add that. Uh, sleep bed. Specifically do sleep bed. Um... Hello? Why aren't you letting- why aren't you letting me- There we go. So there we go. Now, we're gonna want to go into the BP neighbor, randomize idle, 
and set the maximum integer for a random integer in range to 1. Or 2, actually. You know what? Considering the fact that Watch TV is in the middle of this, let's go ahead and move this down to here. And the reason for that is because since uh, we're only making one extra task, uh, this will have to be choosing between 0 and 1, training being 0, and uh, bed being 1. However, how with how it was before, Watch TV would have been 1, and that would have basically made him do nothing and he would have it would have completely messed up the ai uh so just gonna actually i might as well just remove this task i'm not even we didn't we're not even doing it, anything with it right now <laughs> so there we go now we got this extra task sleep bed now whenever we uh press play here uh let's go ahead and simulate why is he not going over there? It's not... Okay. Oh! Ah, ah! I for- I for gore. Uh... You're gonna want to- uh, I for gore, uh... In, uh, the, uh set state you're going to want to do uh you're going to want to get the mesh and do stop uh stop get an instance stop montage stop Stop all. There's, I know there's a stop all montages. Eh, whatever. Stop and montage. You're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna run this because um because uh if you don't uh he'll just play the animation while he's chasing you, which is not ideal. Get montage get current active montage. There we go. So now, if we just go in front of him, he stops the animation. Cool. So uh, now to figure out why the heck he's not running to uh, one eternity later. You are kidding me. You're actually kidding me. Ha 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 ha. I am so sorry. Uh. So, if I actually clicked on the frickin' blackboard key, I would have saw that this was that this was actually blank, and I had to set this back to sleep bed because I changed we changed the neighbor idol enum. Oh great! Ha ha ha! I can't believe my stupid, dumb, idiot brain didn't think of that. Uh, so after you delete or do anything with this, uh, check your blackboard keys and see if they're still set to their appropriate enums, because otherwise. The neighbor will just stand there and do nothing. So, uh, he moves over there just fine, just as he should. Uh, let's go ahead and move that back, because I kept- I, I moved this over here for, like, debugging and stuff. So, of course, he moves over here. However, he currently does nothing. Let's change that. And let's actually make him play an animation. So. Just like before, we will be doing an animation montage. 
So we're just gonna go into the animation montages folder, right click animation, uh, where is it? Anim animation montage. Uh, neighbor Low Poly Skeleton, AM for animation montage, neighbor underscore sleep. And we're going to be using the slip animations. So we're going to do bed in, I believe it's called. Yep, bed in. Drag and drop that here. Of course, he's going to be playing that animation. Sleep. Uh, so, uh, where is it? Sofa sleeping. There it is. I'm, I'm stupid. So he does that. And then we're gonna do bed out. So bed, then we do stand up. So then here. However, as you can see, there are two completely different rotations. Uh, there are a couple different ways you can fix this. Uh, I wish there was just there was just a way to change the positioning of the. Uh, there was just put the, a way to change the positioning of the, the uh, of certain bones here. However, that is unfortunately not the case, and so we're gonna have to do some pretty uh, pretty cookie cutter uh, solutions. And uh, literally, all it is is just is just changing. Uh, the neighbor's position, or, or just changing the neighbor's uh, rotation the second this uh, animation plays. Uh, so we're gonna add a montage notify here, just like before. We'll call this, uh, or actually, let's go ahead and make different segments, or sections, I guess. Uh, Default. Let's change this back to start. Or actually, default is fine. Default is fine. Right click. Wake up. Let's go right here because this is him waking up. And then stand up. Uh, now event, montage, tick type, Q, there we go. So, uh, this notify name is going to be called, uh, rotate. So that way, when we uh, do this, it's going to it's going to detect, hey, it's time to rotate, and it's just gonna it's just gonna actually, we could just remove the stand up section in general because obviously it's gonna be it's gonna be playing these one after the other anyways. So let's finally let's add a. Uh, Mon another montage notify. One last one. Let's just do. We call this uh, choose. Right at the end here. So this is going to decide whether or not the. Uh, let's actually move this here. This is going to decide whether or not it's going to he's going to wake up or continue sleeping. And for each section, let's just remove uh let's remove the link to sleeping and go sleeping and wake up. Cool. So that way, it goes right here. 
and then it's just gonna stop here. So, now we are done with this animation montage and we could go back to the task. So on success, it's gonna set the actor look, uh, rotation, uh, that actor rotation. And the only thing we are going to be wanting to change here is his Z rotation. Uh, just so that you don't end up with a bug with the same uh, bug in, in my pre-alpha remake where you could just where you could just rotate the neighbor just by rotating like objects like the TV. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so, we're gonna do get world rotation, split the struct pen, and just get the Z, Z rotation. And then, we're gonna do, we're gonna get the mesh, the neighbor's mesh. Play montage. And then sleep. Start section is just going to be default. And actually, actually, uh, no, 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 we're fine. So anyways, I thought, I thought we had to do something extra, but no, we didn't. Okay, so notify name, we're going to do the same thing we did before, switch on name. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the animation montage first, so we know what these are names. So that's called choose, that's called rotate. Okay, cool. Rotate, and we're going to do rotate. For choose. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a function, actually. Randomize sleep. Branch. And then we're gonna do random integer. And then the max, let's make it 20. It's equal to zero. It doesn't really matter which number you choose, just as long as it's as it's within the range. And true. Uh, actually, just so we don't have to use a bunch of reroute nodes, let's go ahead and make this a variable. Neighbor. Move it on over here. Cool. So now we can just drag and drop this neighbor variable in here. Get mesh. On to jump or get in an instance, I guess. Section. You know, just to make a. Uh, just to make this a bit make this easier for us. Let's make this loop back to sleeping. So that way he'll just loop the animation and then we'll just jump to the uh, to the wake up section when if the if the uh, blueprints uh, so chooses. So this is true. It's gonna get the anime instance. And it's going to make the montage, jump to section, set this to neighbor sleep. Section is going to be called, is going to be wake up. Because this is going to determine his chance of waking up at uh, after playing this animation. Now, depending on how high this maximum uh, number is on the random integer, the... Uh, the amount of time he sleeps can range from... A long time to he literally like goes down sleeps for like five seconds and goes right back up <laughs> uh but hey 
And predictability, I guess. Uh, we'll just leave that as is for now. Uh, you can make this a bit more complex with timing if you want. Uh, but uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it simple like this. Uh, so, yeah, this is essentially it. Actually, we don't need a return. Uh, this is basically it. Uh, if this is equal to zero, then it's gonna jump to the wake up section. Cool. And then for choose, I'm gonna do that. And then for rotate, we're going to get the neighbor step. Set actor rotation once more. And then we're going to get his current rotation. Get actor rotation. And we're just going to add 180 to 80 to it to make him just flip to the other side. Add 180. And that is pretty much it, I believe. So, let's go ahead and press play. It's over there. Plays the animation. Sleeps. Now... This is triggering, I believe. Uh, let's actually do a print spring here. Just to make sure it's actually triggering. Let's see if it's over here. Triggering why is it not triggering? Oh, I'm stupid. This automatically did this again. Haha. <laughs> On notify begin, let's just that's what you want it. That's what you want to connect it to. I made the same I made the mistake that I told you guys about in the first idle tutorial. Ah Okay, there we go. Still choosing to sleep. Let's actually change the uh, chance and just make it down to like 5 or something just so... Just so we don't have to wait here for a super freaking long time just to get him to wake up. Alright, wake up. However, as you can see, he just rotates like that, which unfortunately is a is the uh, is actually the uh, the cause of the animation here because I'm pretty sure his root bone is rotated, and because of that, he just causes that rotating to happen so unfortunately for now we're gonna have to set the blend out time to zero just so just so he doesn't actually like spin around like that uh so uh this is actually this is literally it in terms of like animations like he starts sleeping then, eventually, he will wake back up. And then he gets back up. And then he uh, should uh, randomize the task. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of animations. So, go ahead and finalize this. And do randomize idle on completed and finish execute. So, 
So, let's go ahead and test it. Goes to the bed, starts sleeping. He gets back up. And then he randomizes it again, but he just he just chooses to go to sleep because I set it to I set the minimum to one because I just wanted him to always choose uh, sleeping just for debugging. Uh, however, we're not done yet because if you actually uh, actually let me let me do current camera location if you. Uh, like sit down to actually like uh if you would notice if we go anywhere near him he still chases us despite the fact he's sleeping so we're gonna have to change that in here we're gonna make a new variable called sleeping let's bring that into the gameplay or actually AI. Let's move that into AI. By default, it's going to be set to false, of course. However, we're going to want the AI perception. We're going to want him to only chase you if he isn't sleeping. So, trigger attack, cop player is not true. Can't say player. We're going to add one last thing here, and that is going to be an AND, copy and paste this knot and connect the sleeping to here, so it's going to, so it's going to check if uh you know what actually actually that's that's actually i don't think that i don't think we should do that because then if he's if he's not if he can't see you but he's sleeping doesn't really make any sense for well i guess he would already be and you know what you know what i am overthinking this severely overthinking this uh, don't listen to me. Keep it that like this. <laughs> so it's gonna check if it, if he can see the player. How? But it's also going to check if he is not sleeping. And so now all we have to do is add one last montage notify. Call this sleeping. And add one more thing here. Sleep. Sleeping. It's going to set sleeping. Uh, let's lower this. Gonna set sleeping to true. However, if he jumps to the wake up, it's gonna set sleeping. False. Or oh, I meant to I meant to keep it as false. So now when I press play and he goes to sleep. Now he shouldn't be chasing me if I run in front of him. See? Now he won't chase me if I am in front of him. However, if I were to say do this, he can still catch me, which in this case would make sense. However, if you don't want him to be able to do that, you can make him check, uh, you can make him check, uh, if, in, you can make him check the sleeping variable in the, uh, catching part of the script as well. So let's go ahead and comment some of these out. Let's go ahead and comment some of these nodes out just so that we can stay a bit organized. 
get fed. Move to bed. Rotate and animation. Finished task. Let's go ahead and bring this out. Oh, okay. Hey! There we go. Go ahead and bring this all the way out over here. And there we go. That is how you, uh, that is how you do a more complex task like sleeping in, in bed. Uh, it is pretty much the same thing with watching TV. You just make him, you just make him move to the TV, into the TV, uh, arrows location. You, I mean, you, I could literally do that, uh, with another tutorial if you'd like. Uh, jo uh, but anyways, it's literally just move to the TV's arrow, set his location. Well, not location, set his rotation. Play an animation montage. Do some logic with with uh, montage modifies and all of that. Then, once he's done playing the animations, uh, finish the task. That's pretty much it. I hope this uh, helps you more with idle tasks, and I hope to see... I, I hope to see you guys uh, creating uh, more stuff like this in the future, and I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. I'll see you in the next one.